This is the Entrepreneur Unleashed Show, episode 23, with Simon Lovell. The Entrepreneur Unleashed. The Entrepreneur Unleashed. The Entrepreneur Unleashed. The podcast where purpose and passion become revenue streams. Be real. Take a stand. Change lives. Here's your host, Patty Keating. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Unleashed Show. I'm your host, Patty Keating. Entrepreneurs everywhere are creating a new breed of business success. They're making their own rules, taking a stand for their purpose, leading through integrity, and making money by changing lives. Join me each week for compelling messages that will inspire and empower you to unleash your true purpose. Would you like to turn your message into a signature system and monetize it with a program or product online? Join me for the online biz webinar, where we'll take you through the steps required to monetize your message. Head on over to the onlinebizwebinar.com and reserve your spot today. I am so happy to introduce you to my friend, fitness expert, Simon Lovell. Simon has a business where he helps uh, fitpreneurs grow their businesses, explode their sales and, and help more people. And he is a pretty cool guy. He he loves helping people, but he also loves wearing onesies. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, maybe if we're lucky. Find out what's behind the scene on that one. Um, hi, Simon. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm actually not wearing a onesie at the moment, uh, which is surprising because it's uh, about uh, 20 past nine in the evening at the moment. Oh, um, well, it's onesie but, time. Well, it is. Uh, you know, I could. Uh, I got a selection, so <laughs> I've maybe seen I'd, some uh, of them. Before hey, the meetings before. I, I know, and I've shocked everyone and definitely <laughs> changed, changed some people's state with the onesie wearing. I don't think it's caught on really over in the States yet, but I'm, I'm going to dominate with it. You're ahead of the curve. And absolutely. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your business. What's going on for you? Well, I, uh, I spent many years in the, uh, in the personal training space. I actually uh, I worked on... Um, national magazines from the age of around 16 to my early 20s and then um i um i really wanted to make a shift in my career and i really loved training in the gym i, I was lacking in confidence and then i really got um, someone took me under their wing i got me exercising and i really got a bug for it and so what happened then was as i borrowed um about seven thousand pounds from my parents <laughs> nice as they were, <laughs> and um, embarked on a new career, which was uh, personal training. And I really loved it. And, you know, af after I did the course, I was kind of fresh out of nappies and wanting to go out there and and really uh, help change people's lives because it had done so, so much for me. And I just did, did uh, particularly well in it. I took a 13-page ebook into a six-figure book deal with HarperCollins called The Lunchbox Diet. And I embarked then on my personal training career, which lasted about eight years and um, I was always really passionate about the marketing and sales side and so it was a natural progression for me really to serve uh, fit pros and really help them build their businesses because many really struggle when it comes to the sales when it comes to the marketing because many <clears throat> go into the industry really wanting to serve and help people but on the business side it's another muscle that needs to be de developed as aside to actually you know, lifting weights in the gym. And so I'm super passionate about, about helping that community and um, and helping them not only increase their income, because that's an important part of it, but really it's about helping them, as you do, helping people change their lives and really get the freedom that they want. Yeah, that's so awesome. So you you were in fitness as a trainer for, what did you say, like seven years? Yeah, about seven or eight years. Um, I worked out of a kind of a big box gym. Mm -hmm. And kind of took my knowledge that I'd um, gathered and actually put that into a digital product system, uh, into a digital, pro digital product called the Lunchbox Diet, which was just a simple idea that I had. Basically, what happened was um, I was training my clients back to back every hour. I was, I was always uh, full with clients. And what I did as a trainer was I used to fill this lunchbox full of healthy food. And my clients said to me, Simon, you're getting great results with me on the fitness side but what about the nutrition side so i gave them a simple three-page document of what i did and how i ate and they came back about after a month saying simon i'm not only losing weight i feel fantastic my energy's up what is this and that idea then sparked into a 
a 13 page ebook which I put on my website and, and to cut a long story short that ebook which was 13 pages got picked up by Elle magazine and they reviewed it against other printed books and called it the best star ever five out of five stars it got linked to Cameron Diaz it got in um, on the cover of international magazines Women's World over there in the States is on the cover of that and um, that just took off it just exploded so really the lesson there is you know you just take ideas and really run with them because you just don't know what's going to happen and the other lesson is listen to the market people were asking you and instead of saying i don't know go hire a nutritionist you just said oh here's what i know here i'll share it with you and they loved it and there's your product exactly and then what happened then was i i then started to learn much much more about internet marketing about product development about how to really generate sales online and generate a passive income and then i started to help other trainers and you know i built a you know a six-figure business in a relatively short period of time just using facebook and really learning about niche marketing about really um building out rather than ebooks building out like higher priced online programs and so what i do is i have two kind of markets i help fit pros uh you know, generate um, more marketing, uh, sorry, improve their marketing, improve their sales, but then also help fit pros generate a passive income too. So I really want to, you know, help people take their knowledge and spread it, um, you know, cast the net wider than a local gym because a lot of these trainers, they invest a lot in terms of their education, but their level of income doesn't match their knowledge. And so that's what I help people do is, you know, people have been in the industry three, four, five years and they've got all this knowledge, but they're not paid what they're worth. And so it's time to really spread that message uh, on a bigger scale. So what inspired you to start that part of your business, the coaching and, and uh, teaching them the model and the, and the marketing? Because of the level of results that I had and seeing people struggle, um, I got to the point in my training career where I was start. I started to look at the the clock, and I, for me, that's a sign that I need to do something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't want to ever stay working, um, training people if, if I was in my heart. If my heart wasn't in it, but my heart was still in the industry. Um, and so, because I loved the sales and marketing side, and I knew that I could uh, help people based on the results I generated for myself, then it was just a, a natural progression for me to continue with doing what I love and also here's the thing you know I went into the uh into the fitness industry because I want to help people and if I can help fit pros then the effect on the audience that they're serving I'm one step back so I have a bigger impact and so that was the reason for that yeah that's that's a great reason train the trainer Mm -hmm. all right so what major obstacles showed up on this path of yours obstacles that showed up blimey um uh, a lot of resistance it always comes up, but it's uh, it's listening and, and starting to understand when resistance uh, comes up. I'll give you an example. Um, I invested in a mentor, and you know, for anyone who wants to be successful, then hiring a mentor is the fastest way to success, as we kind of both know. Yes. Um, and you know, when I first invested in that mentor, I had a lot of resistance to doing it, and I overcame that resistance and the return on investment I got was huge. Now, what happened about, well, pretty much exactly a year later is I was presented with another opportunity to work um, closely alongside Tony Robbins in his platinum program. And that's not, that, that's not a low cost investment. And so what happened was is that the same resistance came up for that program. And here's the thing, because I, overcome the resistance before i knew the signs now that i needed to do it because i was feeling it in my body and so i think a big lesson is is that sometimes you have to make that difficult decision and step over the line but then in the future when resistance comes up again you understand what the sign is it's a signal for you to push over the resistance and so if people could take that first step then you'll get massive acceleration and then you can start to build on that so let's talk about that first step because a lot of times people will interpret resistance as a sign not to move ahead. So how did you move through that challenge? What happened that had you say yes to that mentor and then yes again and push through? I think the level of results that that mentor was getting was a big factor and also based on recommendation. Mm -hmm. And the way, I think we, we always hire mentors based on you know, whenever a client signs up with me, I there's I pretty much instantly ask them what what were the reasons that you decided to invest in me? Because if they 
if their criteria for investing is with me is, is say, for example, because I've been honest and raw, the fact that they had a lot of value from me, the fact that um, I called them out on their BS on the call, these are the same reasons why people are going to invest in them. And so for me, um, it was just about really looking and fi finding someone that I would want to model for myself. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to take on a mentor, you're, you're going to um, work within the same kind of things that they're doing for themselves. And so I think that's a good match. If you like the way that someone's marketing and you like the way that someone's spreading their message and you would like to be similar to them, then that's a good sign on whether or not to hire a mentor, in my opinion. Absolutely. I agree. That's the criteria I use as well. Do I want to become more like that person? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So how did you... Um... Well, let me back up. What lessons did you learn from all of that? Um, well, the biggest one was obviously resistance. The other one was um, that I think that going back to the mental thing is that often you can be challenged and then you can get sometimes a bit, sometimes even angry. Like, But that's you showing up and that's your own um, issues. And there's been many times when I've, you know, even with my clients where I've, I say things to be honest and maybe it causes a, a reaction in them in order to, you know, maybe get a little bit of resistance themselves or maybe get a little bit of, of anger. But that's a really, a really a good sign because of many of the breakthroughs that I've had and many of the breakthroughs that my clients have is when I challenge them. Mm -hmm. And a mentor is there not to sugarcoat things. A mentor is there, is, a mentor is there to challenge you. And so I just think from hiring mentors myself, it's really enabled me to be a better coach myself for my clients. Yeah. Okay. That makes complete sense. You, you know, we're always teaching what we're learning. And so <laughs> as you learn to um, be challenged and, and move through it, we can turn around and teach that. That's the beautiful thing. And there's so much to learn. There's always, uh, you know, you've always got to be stepping up to that next level. You know, whether another big lesson for me was I, I pushed really hard over the past 12, 18 months in my business. Um, but if you do that, you've also got to really work on the personal side too, because if you push too much on the business side, then you're going to neglect certain other things. And so for me, it's about uh, really shifting into a balance and making sure that all areas of my life are being worked on, not just one. Yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. So tell us what you're passionate about right now. Uh, I'm passionate about podcasts, as you are, which is you've got this awesome podcast. So I'm loving doing my podcast with uh, a good friend of mine, AJ Roberts, called The Fritpreneurs, which serves uh, the community that I want to serve. Um, I'm also really loving doing video uh, and being much more authentic. Every day, every day I try and push myself to really share, you know, personal stories and, and challenges that I've overcome. And I think that a lot of people have a challenge to putting that out there because of judgment and they feel that they're going to be judged. Uh, but what they don't realize is that when you share a story and, and be authentic, you really connect on another level. And also it's all about the intention. You know, when I put out a blog post about maybe my addictions that I've had in the past or the challenges that I've had, or I'm just about to put one out about the bullying that I used to have at school, many people may think, well, why would you do that? And the reason is, is that it's all about my intention. You know, if I write that post and it helps one person and it, uh, and, it, and it gets one person off of off drugs or it helps one person, you know, battling against the bullies to change their lives. And I've done uh, the right job and I've done the right thing. So my focus is on always on uh, who is this going to serve and who is this going to uh, help instead of what's what are people going to think of me? Yeah. And I think that a lot of people fear um, a lot of people fear. And, and I had this for a long time of what are other people going to think if I post this on Facebook, what are other peers in my industry going to think? Um, if I if I go and reach out to a local business, what happens if they reject me? And it all comes down to fear, uh, fear uh, of rejection. And, and it's all down to a lot of, you know, obviously what's happened in our past. And what we need to learn to do is, is um, again, overcome the resistance, really share your message, be raw, authentic and and shift the focus away from yourself onto others um, in terms of helping them. That's awesome. So and and. And, you know, the, the, the posts which I have had the most resistance to posting have always been the ones that have got the most traction. Mm -hmm. It's that vulnerability factor. Absolutely. So you mentioned your podcast. I want to make sure we get it in the show notes. So for those of you listening, maybe you're not by your computer right now, um, the show notes will be at pattykeating.com. That's Patty with an I. 
with a forward slash Simon Lovell. You can also just go to my site, pattykeating.com, and search for Simon. And we'll put his podcast, a link to his show, on the show notes page. So you can check out more, um, more of your wisdom with Simon. And also, um, over at my web- over at my website, SimonLovell.co.uk, is a lot of uh, more specific stuff for fit fit pros who want to um, take themselves to the next level. So I really enjoy doing videos and um, being creative. I think that's a, a really important thing is to um, for entrepreneurs is to really get their creative side out. You know, yeah. I did I did an exercise recently where um, I was at an event and. I, it got to the point in the event where people stopped kind of learning and, and the guy decided to get us all on the floor, like drawing like children. Right. And when you actually get into the physiology of like a child, you suddenly become more creative like a child. Yeah. And so we just got there and we were drawing stuff. And um, I just love to be creative on video and my blog posts, you know, maybe wearing a onesie doing something for Movember. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> just the, the, whack, the wackiest ideas that we get are normally the most fun ones. And people, here's the thing, like when you're an entrepreneur, when you're, trying to attract um, people to your business. People are like entertainment. They like, yeah. you know, you be a bit quirky and a bit silly and colorful and stupid and, you know, show your personality. That's what people want to see. People, as much as people invest in products and services, they want to invest in you as a personality. And so just that, that's the, that's the best reason to just be yourself. Absolutely. And, you know, showing up at a mastermind meeting in a onesie and bringing one for the mentor and, and seeing him walk out in a onesie, that's, that's some <laughs> good fun right there. Absolutely. <laughs> doesn't all, it doesn't all have to be serious. You know, I would love to see, um, I would love to see, you know, firms of solicitors and accountants, you know, being silly on camera and showing their personalities because I think that's what the industry needs. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So what's your vision for the next three to five years with this business? Well, do you, it's funny you should say that because on my wall, um, directly to the left of my kind of buddhary style um, canvas, is uh, is <laughs> is my kind of white sheet of paper with very colourful rainbow with me in the middle um, holding my future wife, my two kids I don't have yet, the house in San Diego which I'm going to get, the car I'm going to have, the amount of cash I'm going to have, and the three new businesses that I've envisioned, and also a dog that lo- looks more like a, a blow up balloon. Um, so I have a lot on my vision board. I think for me, um, it's about serving my community on a high level and reaching more, uh, fit pros and helping them build their businesses. But you know, who knows what's going to happen in 12 months. So I may take a radical change of direction. Um, I, I, I want to go with, um, where my passion is at the time. And as long as I continue to do that moving forward, then I'm always going to be working at my maximum potential. I feel. Awesome. All right, Simon, what's the best advice you ever received? Oh, wow. What is the best advice I ever received? Um, I think that, I mean, we've all heard the quote, step out of your comfort zone, right? And do the things which are uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I think just living by, by that rule daily and doing things which are outside of your comfort zone really helped me. In fact, when I was in Vegas, um, I, I, I didn't ever want to jump out of a plane. And I decided to jump out of a plane, not because I wanted to, because I didn't want to. Yeah. And so I'm always looking to do things outside of my comfort zone. So ask, always ask yourself the daily question, what can I do today, which is uh, a little bit uncomfortable? And that's when the results start to come in. Let's talk about that, that plane jump for a minute, because I was there the days before and you were a little bit nervous about it. I, I was very nervous. Yeah. Um, what did that teach you? Um. It taught me that, first of all, it's good to be around people who can support you and, and actually tell you that it's going to be okay. Because I was doing some crazy things, Patty. I was going onto Google, typing in um, skydiving deaths in Las Vegas. I mean, <laughs> I'm talking like that. I'm talking like ridiculous things that you just really shouldn't do if you're going to jump out of a plane. Like, why? Why would you even do that? I mean, what, do you want to create more? Res- like. Do you want to create more tension in your body? Anyway, there's some great people at the Mastermind, and they kind of reframed it. And actually, instead of um, – because what's something really important that someone said to me was that fear and excitement are the same emotion. You just have to look at it differently. Yeah. And so when I was up in that plane, actually it was funny because um, I was actually sat behind a uh, – a, I think it was a Canadian rugby player. And as soon as she started screaming, it actually completely distracted me from my own tension. 
Um, and so she jumped out the plane. I sat on the edge. I jumped out. And um, my fear was um, that the parachute wasn't going to open. So what happened was is that I jumped out, the parachute opened, and then my uh, my fear dropped down a little bit, and then I was okay when I dropped to the floor. Would I, everyone asked me, would I do it again? I would definitely do it again, just not probably in the next 12 months, maybe a little bit later. <laughs> you're, still, you're still coming down. <laughs> yes, absolutely. absolutely. But I've, I've got the video. I did a post on my website. It was called The, Second, it was called the Seven Figure Jump um, because the reason I did it was um, – I, I wanted that jump to mean more than just a jump. And I really wanted it to um, be about getting outside my comfort zone and it about me breaking through some other barriers. And so I really feel, feel that doing things like that is a really good thing to do. So do the things that you don't want to do. <laughs> what personal growth have you experienced as a result of your entrepreneurial journey? Um, I think... Here's the thing. When you invest in mentors and you start building your business and you start um, generating more revenue, that gives you choices and that enables you to invest in other things which maybe you need to fix in your life, maybe relationships or maybe, um, you know, the way that you communicate or um, overcoming uh, personal um, crap that's gone in on your life. And so I'm always growing. And the reason for that is, is that it's very important that I am seen to be growing for my clients. And if I'm stop growing, then they stop growing. And so it allows me that, you know, that being able to increase my income rapidly on a monthly, uh, monthly basis allows me to reinvest, um, in, in learning the self-development stuff, be it Tony Robbins, be it Michael Burnoff, who's a great coach, um, be it, um, you know, Anil Gupta, who's a great friend of mine, but whoever you decide as a self-development coach, um, you know, Patty, you do some amazing work. There's lots of other people um, who are out there who can really help us um, develop that side. I don't think people realize how critical it is to really um, unblock some personal issues that you have because it radically affects your business. Because if you're not happy in yourself and you've got other things which is a, a draining you on a day-to-day -day basis because they're unresolved issues and you have blockages that you have yeah. that's that's costing you a lot a lot of money but more importantly it's costing um the the people that you can help because if if you've got these blockages and you're not serving at the highest level then that's going to affect the impact that you have around the world and so you know in, in, in parallel with investing on the business the sales and the marketing side Guys, work on yourself because it's the greatest gift that you can give yourself. It's the greatest gift that you can give your children when you have them or if you decide that you want to have them in the future. And it's the greatest gift that you can give your clients. Absolutely. And that's a true entrepreneur unleashed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So gadgets and gizmos, what, what do you use to make your life easier as far as tools or uh, gadgets? Uh, I like a good old fashioned, uh, good old fashioned pen and paper for uh, my to do list. But you know, things I use on a regular basis: go to webinar, lead pages. I think everyone's kind of um, you know into that right now because it's so easy, and you know the whole kind of marketing space is made a lot easier. Of course, you need to have marketing skills and and know how to run offers and things like that. But I'll be honest, I don't I don't use a. I've got my Mac, I've got my MacBook, I've got my podcaster mic here, um, and. I just uh, try and keep it simple. I think uh, one of the best investments I ever made was just getting um, a really good camera to do good high quality videos and getting one of those Sennheiser lapel mics, which is about $500 or so. Um, and I got a, um, a really good setup, which is uh, a Canon 550D a while back. And it's actually a cool, in the States, it's a Rebel T2i. And that uh, just with a 50 millimeter lens, that allows you to get that real TV quality, blur the background and do awesome videos. Yes. And if you can... And, and here's the thing, like most people have big resistance to, to doing videos. And my advice would just be just start off with answering, you know, one big question that your your audience asks you, uh, post that on Facebook and just do, take that first step, do some videos and, and then start um, doing more because people connect with you on a different level. And, you know, when people hire me, the, the main reason people say they hire me is because they either see me on video, they've watched a web webinar or, you know, they've read an authentic blog post. That's awesome. I'm taking rapid notes because I, I haven't mentioned this yet, but in June, a couple months or just a couple weeks out, we are launching a second episode of the Entrepreneur Unleashed called Patty on Purpose and it's video. So I'm just getting my equipment together. So I'm rapidly writing down what you've got over there. 
So with video, you know, it's really important to have good quality audio, as we've got on this podcast, um, a good quality uh, uh, camera set up, obviously some good lighting, yeah. uh, and you can produce some some, rec- some great videos and really separate yourself from the other people in your market who are not willing to do it. Yeah. So, you know, any entrepreneurs out, uh, um, oh yeah, entrepreneurs out there listening, um, you know, take the steps, start doing videos. I know it's probably going to be, if you've not done one before, you're going to have um, a certain level of uh, fear about it, but hey, that's a good thing. That, you know, and then you can jump out of a plane more easily. Yeah, and you could video yourself jumping out of a plane. That's right. Is, and then use that as a blog post, which is what I did. So. <laughs> I read that one. I watched that one. Okay, what about books, podcasts, blogs? What do you recommend? Um, so uh, a, a book that I always recommend is called Words That Sell by Richard Bayon, which is just a great book for just to have on your, on your desk. And if you're doing any blogs or content, you can refer to that. Um Stephen Pressfield, Do the Work, is great talking about resistance. We talked about that uh, today a lot on the podcast, and it's a book which I um, give to my clients when they sign up, so that's an awesome one. Also, um, The Big Leap is a fantastic book. So there's a few resources, um, and The Big Leap just talks about how to, um, you know, take yourself to that next level and remove barriers. Mm -hmm. Those are all good. I've read those. All right, Simon, if you were to do this all over again, what would you tell your younger self? Oh, if I was to do this all over again, what would I tell my younger self? Um, I think when I was growing up, a lot I had a lot of things happen to me, and I would like to say to myself, it doesn't matter what they said, it wasn't about you, it was about them. Oh, that's, that's wisdom right there. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. I know you've inspired people and I look forward to the next time I see you. And I just really appreciate you being here with us today. Thanks, Simon. Daddy, thank you for having me on the show and uh, you're doing some awesome stuff. And uh, yeah, look forward to catching up with you soon. Would you like to turn your message into a signature system and monetize it with a program or product online? Join me for the online biz webinar where we'll take you through the steps required to monetize your message. Head on over to the onlinebizwebinar.com and reserve your spot today. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Entrepreneur Unleashed show. If you did, please go to pattykeating.com and let me know what you're up to this year in your business. While you're there, be sure to grab your copy of five quick ways to share your expertise. 